forget Manus, forget Genspark. I've been testing a new agent and it might be my new go-to, Skywork. So normally whenever you go and use ChatGPT or Google Gemini, one of the biggest problems, right, is like you don't have any consistency on what you're asking for. It's just a blank screen and it's like, ask something, right? Now, Manus and Genspark tried to solve that problem by having some ideas at the bottom, right? But in today's video, I'm going to talk about Skywork because there's a few specific features I think really set Skywork apart. So first of all, let's just briefly cover what you're looking at here and then we'll go in detail about the new features um, and then we'll have a, a deeper dive into all of them. My cat's trying to jump down. Let's get into it. So we have on Skywork documents. And as you can see here, different types of documents. We have slides. Same kind of thing, sheets, AI developer, which is cool, we'll come back to that, podcasts, general, it's just like your normal stuff, and then Uvibe, which is well cool. So let's get started with AI developer. Now there's a few examples down below. As you can see, the Deadpool Instagram one with celebrities is pretty cool. Um, I'll open it up here. And you can see, we'll talk more about how it does all this stuff. It uses MCP tools, etc. But it creates this website at the end of it where we can open this in a new tab or to the side. And there we go, it's Instapool. Choose a celebrity for Deadpool selfie. Let's go Hugh Jackman. And boom, picture of Hugh Jackman and Deadpool, a little caption and even some fake comments, which is pretty cool. Um, anyway, so normally whenever I'm testing models like ChatGPT, like Gemini, I ask it to create for me a 3D race car game using 3GS. And what this means is that basically use JavaScript uh, library called 3GS and create a game which actually works. And that's what we're testing here. So Skywork gets your request and it goes away and then it asks you some clarifying questions. Now, what I really like about the clarifying questions is it gives you options to answer. I hate when in ChatGPT for like deep research, it was, it'll ask questions and you need to actually write words back. Here it's just like, Car selection, do you want single predefined or multiple cars? Environment, where do you want it to be? The game perspective, first, third, both. Game objectives, time base, obstacle, collect, blah, 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 right? Day and night features, all that stuff. Leaderboards, it's thought it all through already. So I just go answer what I want and then boom, it goes away. It starts to write some code, run some code, write some files, etc. And at the end of it all here, we see it then builds this game out that we can then open in this new tab, and we can actually just share it with anyone at this link. If we click start, boom, that's it, it's working. It's a working game, which actually, I can move, you can see the obstacles avoiding gets. There we go, add it to it, and then when I crash, it ends. And I know that sounds daft, I'm impressed by this. Like, it's not, you know, GTA 6, but the uh, lack of ability of these LLMs normally to actually create games that work from the get-go. You know, I'm really impressed by that to work just, boom, first one shot. Um, even has an audio experience, which is well cool as well. So the cool thing is we can run it here, right? Go check that out. But we can also add super base. So this is just a simple game. If we were to extend this out and actually turn it into a full product that we're gonna you know, sell or something, you'd want a persistent back end. And here we can just connect up to Superbase, just like you could do with Lovable or something like that. Now additionally, if we click here, you can see access permissions. We can change that to only visible to me or public, visible in search engines as well, which is cool. And then link expiry. So if you want us to be live just for a few days, etc. And even replay mode. So for this, it means we can share this and someone can come and watch it run this whole thing top to bottom. So you can actually see how it works. Kind of like um, what Manus used to do. Now something else we can see as well, down here are all files, because you'll be wondering where's the code? Well, the code's here, and we can see it. We have the 3D racing car game code here, which is the HTML, we can download that. Then we have the TypeScript, whoops. We have the TypeScript here, sound manager, and then the car game itself. And you can see when I click that open there, you can actually see it on the side, so we have the code just like any other AI here, which is great and a preview as well, which has the full working game. And from here, we can even click up this, and we can download that. So there we go, we've downloaded this, this file as well. 
So really, really impressed with the AI developer stuff. So the next new feature I wanted to cover was Uvibe, which is you give it a YouTube link and you can create whatever you want from it. So I have some examples here. It makes a podcast. It has a mind map. This one here is highlight. So I think this is like a, a, a slideshow. This is a slideshow, that one there. And then there's a document and a couple other things too. So like if we open up one here, we have YouTube video analysis slide deck. Now, at the top here, it gives this YouTube link. See here, which is made by Google 2025. And then it pastes it in and says, analyze the main content and key data and generate a 10 page slide deck. And then it goes through here, creates a slides outline, as you can see here. Um, and then your slide presentation is ready. Boom, just like that. And now you have this 10 page. I mean, look how slick that looks. It is well impressive. Like, the the level that it's operating at is so cool. And the fact that you can have this degree of consistency as well with things like slides and stuff, because if we look here, you can see you can select a specific deck and get it to populate based on that. But the fact you can do it from a YouTube video is brilliant. Because if you know the channel, I started out on the channel learning all about data, Azure, etc., teaching people. So, you know, you create these slideshows for your own learning. Additionally, I tried this out myself, so take out the main principles from this video and display it as a CEO summary style. And the video was a masterclass on plant-based nutrition by Rich Roll. So it goes away, and I actually created this here, this document, which was the executive's guide to plant-based nutrition. I, I, I was so impressed, and it covers every single main point, gene expression, telomere length, autophagy and cellular repair, gut microbiome, all of this stuff that he talks about inside the podcast. And then to go even one step further forward here, we can get it to check the references. So this podcast is just a guy talking, right? Or well, masterclass with different doctors and stuff. But you need to then make sure that these references are the legit. And so you can run that by them and actually get it to go and see who are they citing, etc. And you can even then go and get it to verify it itself. And so, yeah, we have... I'm so impressed by this here. And the ability to then go and make mind maps and stuff is going to be a really handy feature, especially for educators on the platform. So a couple of other cool features here is that we actually have deep research. So when I had shown you that it was asking me clarifying questions, so let me see here. When I was trying to create the game and it was saying, you know, what about this, what about that? You can get that for your actual prompting by selecting deep mode. So if you go for fast mode, it will just come back with a fast reply. But if you do deep mode, it will look at more sources, it will ask for more information from you to ensure that it's getting a deeper research, right? So instead of looking at, you know, five papers, it looks like 20, which is really good for documents, just like when you're creating these ones here, because you want it to be as deep as possible, the knowledge base that it has. So let's give it a try. Let's just ask something like, you know, Give me a history of AI CEO summary, including what to expect in the next five years. For this, we're going to go deep mode. As you can see, it is enabled here. And now it's going to come back. It's going to ask me some clarifying questions and all of this. Now, something you may have seen as we're doing this is files. You can add in files. So if we open up the side here, we can actually add in files locally. So you can upload files, upload folders. You can upload from your knowledge base. So when you've added files, you can get it from there. Links and text. So you can just paste in chunks of text and keep it in your local knowledge base. You can also hook up your cloud. So Google Drive, I use that all the time. Join up here and you're sorted. Anyway, let's go back here. I was too late, but that's fine because I wanted to keep going. Basically here, it's asking us to add some more. So what do you want the title to be? How long do you want it to be, etc. All these different questions, key aspects to cover, target audience and tone. And the cool thing here, as I've been saying, you can click on it, right? You don't have to type, you can just click, which is brilliant for someone like me. But also, if you're not sure, you can just let AI plan it using this select button. So it's selecting the others. So here, now it goes, to create this to-do list, right? So information gathering, analysis, future predictions and outlook, and then writing a comprehensive 
AI CEO history report. Crazy. Anyway, it's going to go away now and it's going to gather what it needs to know. And down here, you can actually see where it is on its to-do list, which is pretty cool, and how long it's taken. So what we're going to do is we're going to let that go and do its thing, and we'll come back and have a look when it's done. And there we go. We can see Skywalk's computer. So it's using the MCP tool to search the web to actually find the information that it's after. So list of anthropic executives, blah, blah, blah. There we go. Already it's searching for more sources. I mean, it's just going to go through a bunch of sources to get as much information as possible. And look, I have tried a bunch of tools, as you can see on the channel. But I really do think Skywork stands out compared to the others. I feel like, honestly, the, the biggest thing for me is the feel. How does it feel? Does it feel natural? Manus always felt like it looked cool, but it actually worked kind of weird and it was hard to see. And the way that the pricing structure is is a bit dodgy. Gen Spark's pretty cool, but again, I just, I, I like the way Skywatch put together. It's pretty cool, man. So whether you're making documents, slides, using Google Sheets, developing stuff, want to create a podcast like what you would do on Notebook LM, just general queries, or you want to chat away or use YouTube videos as a base, because we all know in ChatGPT, you cannot use YouTube videos. Skywork is the place for you. Go and check it out. It will be the first link in the description below. Stop getting stuck trying to get consistency, not knowing where to start. Check out Skywork. If you liked the video, like the video. Comment. What do you think? You're going to be using Skywork. And uh, make sure to subscribe for upcoming videos. So if you want to see what Skywork came away with creating here, check it out. The link will be in the description below to check out the replay. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you later.